Hello guys, welcome to the Donu tutorial in 3ds Max. This series of videos are sponsored by Autodesk. Thank you so much. Let's see how to set up the render in 3ds Max. 3ds Max comes with Arnold that is an excellent renderer. So far we have been using physical material on the materials and this will be fine rendering with Arnold, with V-Ray, with Corona, with everything else. Arnold has his own specific material, but if you are starting, can be overcomplicated. And some people complain about Arnold being difficult. I can tell you, it's not difficult. Physical material is very basic. You have color, roughness, transparency, subsurface scattering, and emission. It's the basics. If you need something more advanced, you can go to Arnold Surf, and will work fine on viewport and on rendering with Arnold. So keep with it so far. Now for the settings, we will press F10. And here you can see all the Arnold settings. From renderer I can switch to V-Ray or whatever you want, but I will stick with Arnold. In 3D Spanks we have production and active shade. Production is when you press F10 or F9, you will create a production render, that is this. Now we have Arnold Render View, that is an advanced uh, way to create your renders, but this is as well a production render. As you can see, you can update in real time. The production rendering mode, all the parameters here are fine to adjust this Arnold render view. But if you want to adjust whatever you are doing on viewport, because this is active shade, you need to switch to active shade mode. And now we are changing the parameters that happens on viewport. You have a lot of values here, but wait a second, I am using CPU right now, and for that to be faster, I would like to switch to GPU. Arnold can render perfectly fine with CPU or GPU. And to change it, it's you go to system, device, and you will switch CPU for GPU. You don't need to change anything else, the materials are the same. What you will see is that on Arnold renderer, you cannot tweak these parameters. But if you want simplicity, this is perfect. And for now, because it is a basic tutorial, forget about all of this here. We only have camera samples here, and you should focus only with these ones. People saying that Arnold is very complicated because you have a lot of values. Forget about it, we have one value. Bigger values will mean that the renderer will be cleaner, less noise, and will be slow. And lower values will be faster renderers with a little more noise. Three, for what we need to do, it's fine. Now, if we want to do optics to do the noising, go lower and on imagers, we have root imager. Here we will go into Arnold, imagers, and we have a optics denoiser. We can apply it here. This will create a denoise on our viewport. And this is all what we need to do here on Arnold settings. Now, if we switch to using Arnold on Active Shade, the first time you will need to wait a little because it's loading everything into the GPU RAM. But when this is done, it's really fast. You can see that you can move your viewport around and it's fast. Illumination is not spectacular right now, but because we don't have anything to reflect, anything to illuminate with. Everything is very basic. To add an HDR image to have nicer reflections, press 8. This will open the environment and effects panel, and on environment map, click there. We can go to OSL, environment, HDRI environment. We can choose an HDRI, and 3ds Max chips with some of them. I will use Combination Room because it's an interior, and I think that can be good for what we are trying to do. And we have this, that as you can see now, it's much nicer. We have reflections, we have lighting going on, but the background can be a little annoying. To switch to don't have background, press M, open the Material Editor, and drag and drop your OSL here with Instance. Now we have it here, we can close that. We can tweak any value from there. You can tweak the rotation, for example, of the environment. But something that I do always is use custom background and it will switch to a black. And you can just change the color if you want. Now the illumination is still happening with the HDRI, but the background will be whatever you, you define. And you can see the reflections going on and the soft shadows from the HDRI. I think it's quite nice. Let's add something on the ground can be a plane, and I, let's move it a little below to cast some shadows. The material can be maybe better. Let's add a physical material, and you can control it from here. Let's, we can add a blue color and apply this to this ground. Now, sometimes some people like to use a lot the wireframe color. 
but the wireframe color only changed the wireframe color on viewport but not this color on the physical material because it's only for the wire color but OSL has something cool and I will show you is that we can access this wireframe color for this we need to go to a scene attributes and we will check wire color this will get whatever color our object has now switching the this color there to green it will not make an effect right away you need to turn off and turn on the the active shade and this will trigger this to to recompute as you can see so it's simply another option you have to to change colors based on a on a wireframe color i think that it's good always to know all these kind of tricks and can be quite useful now this is very reflective as you can see if we go to the physical material we have iobar Increasing this will make it even more reflective, only so you can see, can create a, like a mirror. And roughness will create it a more roughness material, so it will scatter light around. And with this, together with uh, 1.6, let's add a light, because maybe the HDRI is not enough. If you go to the lighting, we have photometrics that will work with Arnold again, but I like quite a lot to use the Arnold lights. You click and drag, and we have an Arnold light. And you will see that they are pretty handy. We have multiple types of lights here. Point, distance, spot, quad, quad, I like it. You can increase the dimensions of this quad light to make it more soft. Like a studio light. The intensity is not too much, so on exposure we can go to 15. And intensity 1.5, for example, we can see that now we start to see something there. If we change the color of the light, to something more yellow you can see that for the color of the light you need to refresh active shade to be visible sometimes there are some elements that are not directly visible on viewport if you don't do a refresh something i like quite a lot from the arnold lights are the spread one it means that it's spread totally if we go to zero will be like a directional light you can see it creates a rectangular light that can be cool depending on the look that you want to do and intermediate values will create intermediate results so it can create this kind of a spread now let's tweak some materials on the chocolate we see that the reflection is too strong if i select the chocolate to know which material it's applied because now we have quite some materials you can see these triangles around if it's gray like this one means that the material is in somewhere of the scene but it's not the one that we have selected when it's the one that it's selected you can you will be able to see uh, white triangles like these ones so this means that this is the material of this object i will increase a little the roughness of this so you can see that we are breaking a little that if you want more options you can switch the simple by advanced and we have for example reflections we can decrease a little the reflection on this object or we can change the color of the reflections now I can see that this donut is maybe not as detailed as I wanted. I would like to add a turbo smooth to get more detail. The problem is that if you remember this object, the glacé, it's referencing this object. So if we add a turbo smooth, now the glacé that has the resolution that we want will get too much resolution. So what we need to do is branch this object into a reference. We can do right click, make reference, and we are branching this one more time. Pressing X, we can go and add a turbo smooth. And now you can see that we have a turbo smooth on the donut, but not on the glacé. And it's what we wanted. Now let's check this glacé that I think that the glacé, it was this one, as you can see. And I would like to add a boom map. On the boom map, we can drag and drop and get a noise map. I like the noise. We have Uber noise as well. You can use whatever. The Uber noise, maybe it has more options, but the noise is more simple. We don't see this much now. I think that it's because the scale is too big. We can go to two, but we will not see much neither. The amplitude is how much strong this noise it is. If we go to 20, we should see something. And as you can see, we can see it. It's too much, but I can see that it's too big as well. Let's go to 1.5. And now that we know that it's more or less what we want, we can decrease this amplitude to something like five or even less, but it gets some nice detail. I think that we can go even smaller and you have different types of uh, noise and you can play with them. So you can create really a lot of different uh, versions of it. 
something that I would like on this dove, I will increase a lot the roughness. So here we have our donut rendered. And now let's add some camera and some elements to it. To place the camera in perspective, move around until you see some position that you like. Let's go there for now. And press Ctrl plus C. This will create a camera. You can see that it changed to physical camera and it's selected for you. So we have the physical camera selected. We can do different things here. We can change the focal length. Some more photographic length will be something like close to 70 millimeters, and with these buttons here, you can move out. Now, if you want to add depth of field, you can simply, you press this button and you will add depth of field. That will not be very visible right now because it depends on the aperture. In decreasing the aperture, let's go to 0.4, it will be a lot. Now we can see the depth of field. But anything is in focus, that's because of the target distance. The depth of field is using the target to create the focus point in your donut. Now we can select this this target, switch to local and move it so the focal point is wherever we want. That I think that here it will get this area crisp and you can see the focal point when you select the camera, you can see it here. And so I should go a little more there. This area here will be in focus, all the rest that is not in this clip plane will be out of focus. From the camera we can see it quite clear. Let's go more extreme even because I want to show you something different. When you start to go really extreme with this, we get a lot of noise even if we have even if we have the noise in, in top. So we would like for the final image uh, to have more quality. With F10 selected, I will go into Arnold Renderer and we have this three. So remember, instead of three, I will go to maybe 12 and you will see clearly the difference that we have here. It takes more time to process, obviously, but when it refines, that we will see it. Right now, uh, we have an image without any type of noise. It's way, way cleaner. So when you want to switch to final production, you can pump up these values to 12 or something similar to that. But while you are working and tweaking settings, it's good to be on lower values, so it's way faster. More things that you can do with physical camera is that we can add vignetting. We will need to install exposure control. This can overexpose your camera, but then we have this target. Increasing it will adjust the exposition. So now it's something more in line with what we had before. We can fine tune the white color. You have different presets here that you can use, or you can use a color specifically. And we can add enable vignetting that will create some dark areas. If you want it to be really visible, crank up these values. I am exaggerating a little too much, but it's so you can see that we have this pronounced vignetting around and the lighting point is more focused into the donut. When you are fine tweaking the values on active shade and you want to go to final production, normally you would like to switch active shade for production rendering mode. And doing so, what I tend to do is to use the under Arnold Render View. Arnold Render View is very good and it improves quite a lot the way of working with 3ds Max. And yeah, basically it's the same. We can render from our camera, we can see our image being rendered, and now it's using CPU. You can use CPU or GPU. Uh, at the end it's applying the vignetting that we had. Maybe it's too strong, but we can all adjust all this. And to adjust the production render, again, if you want to still use GPU, you can do it as well. In system device, you can switch CPU by GPU. And it's exactly the same as we had before. Now we are using GPU it's, and it's way faster. Usually I don't use vignetting here. I try to keep the vignetting as a post-process effect when I am doing the composition to have more flexibility, but all are options. More things that you can do here is that you can uh, add color corrects directly into Arnold Render View. This gives you a lot of control if you want to tweak the, the shadows of the image or contrast or whatever, you can do it from here and you can add multiple of that. You can add a, a, an optics denoise that will run in top at the end. And we have Light Mixer. Light Mixer is really powerful. You will see the different light that we have. Right now we only have one light and an HDRI. To see the lights here, we need to create a light group manager. We have an Arnold light. We can create um, whatever name will be um, lights. 
we need to create this light group and we plug this light here. With one light doesn't make so much sense. And now the cool thing is that with this light, we can turn on or off the intensity of the light. You can see it on the reflect here. If I turn it off, there is no light. Uh, so we can adjust the HDRI environment from here. We, could, we can turn off the HDRI intensity from here and increase the light intensity. So it's really flexible and you can do a lot of things with the Arnold Render View. And here is where you are supposed to export the final render uh, when you need to save it in whatever format you want to use. So this has been a quite basic tutorial around Arnold and how to prepare your scene to render this donut scene with Arnold. As you can see, a lot of people think that Arnold is really complex, but I don't think it is. You can make it complex if you want and it's a powerful of Arnold, it has a lot of options. But if you want to keep it simple as we did, I think it's very simple. With very few values, you can control the quality of your renderer. You can use physical material that is a quite simple solution to render most of the materials that you will need. And yeah, it's an excellent renderer. I hope that you liked this video. If so, please share it with your friends, give a like, give a comment, and don't forget to subscribe because now we have to do the last episode that will be fluids. We will create some interesting fluids to finish the composition of our donut. Thank you one more time to all my patrons that make these videos possible. If you want to consider being one of my patrons, it helps me a lot. You will get the max files associated with these videos and much more other things that I am posting. And you can see the videos before everyone else. Thank you a lot, guys, and see you soon. Bye.